Haribo, everyone. We're slowly getting warmed up here. Uh, thanks for coming. We'll be ready to start in just a couple of minutes. Thank you for being here. Hari, hari. Haribol, everyone. Welcome, welcome. As people are joining, we're just going to start singing a little bit just to get get everyone uh, caught right into the holy names as quickly as possible. Ready? Govinda Jaya Jaya Gopal Radha Ramana Hari Govind Radha Ramana Hari Govind Radha Ramana Hari Govinda 
Govind Jai Jai Gopal Jai Govind Jai Jai Gopal Jai Jai Radha 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 Govinda Jai Jai Gopal Jai Govinda Jai Jai Gopal Jai Govinda Jai Jai Gopal Jai Jai Govinda Jai Jai Gopal Jai Jai Govinda Jai Jai Go pal, 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 go Go pan, 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 go go pan, go pan, go pan, go pan, go pan, go go pan, go pan, go pan, go pan, go go Adharamana Hari Govinda Jai Jai Adharamana Hari Govinda Jai Jai Adharamana Hari Govinda Jai Radha Ramana Ramana Radha Ramana Radha
Govind Jai Jai Gopal Jai Govind Jai Jai Gopal Jai Govind Jai Govinda Hari Govinda 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 Nice to be here with all of you. Thanks, Ravati, for singing and playing so beautifully. So we're in the uh, basement of our house in Washington. So lovely to see all of you here. Thank you for joining. I hope uh, the link and everything worked smoothly. I hope no one had any trouble. Haribo, all my friends. Haribo, Avinash Prabhu. Haribo, Narayana. Haribo. We have Gora and Prema. We have Dwaita Hari Prabhu, my dear friend. We have Anasuya. We have uh, uh, Gori. We have Kairava. I think she's from Hong Kong, maybe. Uh, we have Gopi Kalaya. Gopi, my friend, how are you? Uh, Graham Hen Hattrick, Kunti Mata, Madhuri Devidasi, Moga Yoga. Hey, it's Graham. How are you? So nice to see you. Wow, what a blessing. I didn't know it was you this, Graham. What's up, Monica? Hey, how are you? Monica Priya and Shadi. And we have Srivani. We're going to hear from. Oh, my Aunt Susan is here. Oh, I love you guys all so much. Naratam Vilas. Who else is here? Gori. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So um, I want to I want to hear from this dear friend Srivani, who you guys know from our from our uh, budget study that starts at seven thirty or sorry seven not seven thirty we only have twenty minutes until Srivani, um, will you sing this next budget with uh, me and Ravati uh, uh, Manasa Deha Geha? Can you unmute yourself? Yeah, sure. I don't know if she's there yet. But um, Srivani, if you're there, uh, please unmute yourself and sing with us. Can you hear um, me more? We'll give you gaps if you want to sing. If you come, if she comes, just have her tell her that we're asking her to sing with us. If not, that's something else. Can you, can you hear so this me more? Is, um, so this we're calling the bhajan boat. And um, life is like a box of chocolates, according to... Uh, the Hollywood, Forrest Gump in Hollywood. But life is also like a great ocean. And um, the Lord's lotus feet are like a boat that we climb aboard to lift ourselves out of the waves and the chaos. And those feet are incredible because they're so little. They're like the, the little baby's feet. They're like only this big, right? Krishna's little baby feet, right? And his toes are so gentle and small. They're described as padapallava, that they're like the little lotus bud, not the lotus buds, jasmine buds. Teeny tiny, like how big is the jasmine? We have some growing upstairs. It's like this big, so pinky. 
but those feet are like great boats. So we climb on board. This is a song by the same uh, author uh, as that we're studying tonight, but from a different book. And this is one of my favorite songs in the whole world. Favorite songs in the whole world. Ever, anywhere that I ever, ever came across. Let's see. Okay, we'll just scroll down. Okay, you guys can sing along. I wish there was a better way to see this. Oh, is that better? Can you guys still see it that small? We can. can still read it that small? Yeah, we can. Okay. So, let's read the verse, the first verse together in English. Bring it a little closer. Hopefully you can still see us all. Mind, body, and family, whatever may be mine, I have surrendered at your lotus feet, O youthful son of Nanda. In good fortune or in bad, in life or at death, all my difficulties have disappeared by choosing those feet of yours as my only shelter. Let's read another verse. Slay me or protect me as you wish, for you are the master of your eternal servant. So sometimes people say, how can a bhakta say that? Why would a bhakta say, slay me or protect me? But uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he's just reminding us that that's already our, our position. Really? <laughs> what can we do except what the Lord lets us do? So it's not surrender, actually. It's just awareness of reality, awareness of what's really going on. And he's saying, I accept and I am happy. If you're happy, I'm happy. So there's more verses to come. Let's start with this. Let's see. Okay, here we go. So we'll learn the first verse together. Nanda Kishore, Nanda Kishore. The last two words of the first verse. Nanda Kishore, Nanda Nanda Kisha Nanda Kisha Manasa de Hoge Ho Together Manasa de Hoge Ho Joki Chumo Joki Chumo Joki Chumo Joki Chumo Manasa de Hage Ho Manasa de Hage Ho Joki Chumo Joki Chumo Ar pilu tu apade nanda kisho. Ar pilu tu apade nanda kisho. Ar pilu tu apade. Nanda Kisha Nanda Kisha Nanda Kisha Nanda Kisha 
get some comments going in case you guys need to say anything because we're not seeing the screen. Let's see here. Sam Pade Vi Pade Jivane Marane Sam Pade Vi Pade Jivane Marane Sam Pade Vi Pade Jivane Marane Dai mama gila tua, o pada bara. Dai mama gila tua, o pada bara. Let's sing the first verse together. Mana sa de ha ge ha. जो की Okay, Raven, to you read verse four here. So I see you guys in the text message are saying that Shivani is speaking to me. So after we do this, we'll have Shivani sing something. So you read now uh, translation for verse four, five, six, Raven. If it is your will that I be born again, then may it be in the home of your devotee. Die. May I be born again, even as a worm. Even as a worm? Even as a worm. Oh my lord. So long as I'm, I may remain your devotee. We just got a pet right before the shutdown. We we went on the last day. We went and got a ferret. I don't know anyone who's ever had a ferret before. We've we've had ferrets before. They're very playful and crazy. My friend calls them. Uh, what do you call it? A snake rat, yeah, a snake rat. But they're really lovable and friendly. So even as a ferret, may I be born as a ferret in the house of the devotee. I have no desire to be born as Brahma averse to you. And what is verse six, Ravati? I yearn for the company of the, of the devotee who is completely devoid of all desire for worldly enjoyment or liberation. Beautiful. Janma obi moecha jadito Janma obi moecha jadito Bhakta grihe jani janma Kita <laughs> Bahir Mukha Brahma Jamme 
भक्ति मुक्ति स्पृहा जय भक्त भक्ति मुक्ति स्पृहा जय भक्त लभाई देता को संग Vani, are you there? You want to say something? Let's see if I can hear you. Hurry, Bol. Oh, there you are. Hurry, <laughs> Bol. Okay, you please read uh, the translation here for seven and eight, and then you sing these seven and eight verse. Okay. This is why these two are my favorite verses. The last one mentions the name of my Guru Maharaj, Radha Swami. I love this. These last two verses. Please, you sing. You speak, speak, and then sing. Father, mother, lover, son, lord, preceptor, and husband, you are everything to me. Thakur Bhakti Vinod says, O Khan, please hear me, O Lord of Radha, you are my life and soul. प्रभु गुरु अतीत हो सर्व वन मोर टाइम दैट सेवन वर्स सेवन जन And the last verse, please. Bhakti bina da kahe shuna kano Radha natha tuhu mama parano One more time, last verse. <laughs> Bhakati vinoda kohe shuna kano Radha natha tuhu mama parano Okay together let's sing the the um first verse the kind of chorus line together Manasa <laughs> 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Krishna, Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hare 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 you sing, please. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Shivani. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Jai Sachinandana Gaur Hari. Jai Sachinandana Gora Hari Jai Sachinandana Gora Hari Jai Sachinandana Gora Hari Jai Sachinandana Gora Hari Gora Hari Prabhupada, Prabhupada, 
Hari Bol to Robert. Hari Hari Bol. <laughs> Let's see who else is here. Thank you for the wonderful kirtan. Beautiful. So nice. So nice. What a treat. Brittany, so, Kimberly. Kimberly's going to be singing with us tonight. Shasti Prabhu is here. Mohan Krishna is here. Hari Hari Bol. Amoga Leela Devi is here. Dorothy Cernaker is here. Gurdas Prabhu is here. Welcome. Uh, we have, who else is here? Ravindra Prabhu is here. Owen, hey, Owen. <laughs> look, it's Owen, Ravindra. <laughs> Owen from Plenitude in Puerto Rico is here. Hey, wow, what a treat. That's uh, so nice to see all of you guys. Puerto Rico. Ananda is here, yeah. We have also uh, Govinda Raju Prabhu. Twin One, Vishnu Priya, uh, Radhika Priya, uh, Nagarwal, Avijit Arora, Kunti Devi. So many wonderful souls. We have all our friends from all over. So happy to see you. Yes. Hare Krishna, Radha Kunda. Oh, my Lord and Master, Radha Kund Prabhu. Anyone who's ever come with me to, to, to India, it's all because of the mercy of Radha Kun Prabhu. Radha Kun Prabhu is the, he is the one who organizes all the trips and pilgrimages everywhere. Wow. And we have Archita Prabhu from Los Angeles who works at the BBT, the Bhaktivedanta Book Trust. Behind him is the proof that he's at the Book Trust. Uh, Archita Prabhu is going to be speaking with us today. All of you are so blessed. We're so grateful. And then the Gopi Mataji is joining us. Thank you. Dave Butt Prabhu, Hari Bol Prabhu from uh, Chicago, from Neighborville, Krishna Kumari. The, Ch the Chander family is here. Wow. My mother in law, Mother Ramatulsi. So many wonderful people. All right. Well, I'm going to. Oh, Jalil. Even the young generation is here. Jalil is here. All right. Michael Sass. Thank you. All right. So Shout I'm going to over now to Chastivar Prabhu. Shout out from the Funky Home today. Thank you so much, Gorban. Oh, wonderful. It was so nice to be with you guys. Uh, I was on a 300-hour training with you guys today. What a treat. What a treat. Everyone was so touched. We appreciated you. Thank you. Great pleasure. Great pleasure. So, very short introduction. This is the study of Kalyana Kalpa Taru, mm -hmm. uh, written by uh, His Divine Grace, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, who was both materially and spiritually a phenomenal person. And um, he uh, would uh, be a, a high court judge by day during the time of the British Raj. And in the evening time, he would write ecstatic poetry, uh, letting his heart out onto the page. And uh, Shastivar Prabhu is taking us through the second book. We previously went through Sharnagati with him, Life Transforming Experience. And now we're going through Kalyana Kalpa Taru. Um, thank you so much to everyone who's making this possible. Thank you for being here. Um, I'm going to mute everyone, and um, I'm going to make uh, Vishnu uh, a host here, if she's here yet. Vishnu, when you come on, please let me know. I don't see Vishnu here yet. Is she there? Oh, she's there. Okay, yeah. Okay, I see you. I'm going to make you um, co-host.
Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Pristaya, Bhutale, Srimate Bhakti Vedanta, Swami Niti Nani, Namaste Saraswati Deve, Gauravani Pucharine, Nirvashesha Sunyavadi, Pascacha Deshadarine, Jaya Jaya Shri Chaitanya, Pachita Bhava. Jaya Nityananda Anatta Tara Jaya Jaya Dvaita Chandra Kripa Saka Jaya Rupa Sanatana Jaya Gadat Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhara Shiva Sarita Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Everyone sing along. Hare. Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Can you guys hear me? Gore, I only see you. Can you hear me? We uh, hear you. We hear you. Something happened, Shastivar. We lost Shastivar Prabhu. Yeah. Just see. Correct. <laughs> okay. Modern technology fails us again. <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> <laughs> Let me call him. Uh, it might have been an Oh, wait. Hold on, hold on. Sachi Bhatta is here, his wife. Okay. Sachibata, can you please tell Shashtira Prabhu that it's the call back in, yeah. Can you tell him to join back in? Persistence so necessary with technology. Yeah, one thing we could do is one of the points that Shastivar Prabhu was just making is Hare Krishna. I know it was evening Krishna, Hare Hare. There he's back. There he is. Ah, we carried on where you left off, Prabhu. 
Microsoft oh, Windows Kida. Oh, <laughs> 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 my, my computer literally shut off. This my power's in, my Ethernet's in, everything's in. There's no reason for it to shut off. So <laughs> too, too much ecstasy. <laughs> it's Krishna reminding us who's in control. That's exactly, exactly, exactly. Uh, that's too much thank you, Sachi Mata. Thank you. Well, maybe the computer went overflowing, right? Which was <laughs> the computer and was the holy man brought you back, and the holy man brought you back. <laughs> Thing needed more RAM. Anitai gold, buddy, buddy. 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 Anitai Shri-kalyana-kopa-tru-bhajan-vot-ki-sila-bhakti-vinod-thakor-ki. Gaur-bhakta-vindi-ki. Jai-nithai-gaur-apimanandi. All glories to the Sama devotees. All glories to the Sama devotees. All glories to the Sama devotees. So, I want to thank everyone for joining. Let's put the agenda up there. We have a very wonderful evening plan for all you wonderful devotees out there. And I heard that someone's from Puerto Rico. Did you say there's someone that's from Puerto Rico, Gorani Pabu? There's a very dear friend of mine named Vaishnav who runs an eco farm in Puerto Rico is here joining us today. Oh, thank you so much. That's one of my very dear places. Uh, where we were able to preach on behalf of Srila Prabhupada for quite some time, way back in the 70s. So really happy to hear that you're joining us. So let's see the, the agenda. Uh, one second. Gauravani Prabhu, can you uh, put me as a co-host so I can share my screen? It's not letting me share my screen today. I think I did already make you as co-host. Uh, let me do again. Wait one second. Host disabled participant sh screen sharing. One second. Are, so you, as are they, you the host now? Uh, did, it make, did it make you the host? It says co host and that, yes. Okay. Can um, you share your screen? Yes, now it's working. Thank you. Sorry. Okay, so. The last several weeks previous to this, we were engaged in reciting the introductory prayers of Sri Kalyana Kopaktru and describing exactly Bhaktivinoda Thakur's vision and, and the reason why he composed this, this beautiful songbook for us. So now today, we're going to sing the prayers to the spiritual masters the Shiksha and Diksha Gurus, and it will 
Gorani Prabhu and Srivani Mataji did such a wonderful rendition last week. So we want them to start this wonderful Upadesha section of Sri Kalyana Kopataru off by singing that song again. And then we're going to have Bhakti Kimberly sing the very first song of the Upadesha section. It was a very beautiful song. And then we're going to read the translation. And then we have a very, very special guest. His Grace Archita Prabhu is, is joining us from Los Angeles. Anyone that's been to Los Angeles has been graced with hearing the wonderful classes and getting the wonderful association of Archita Prabhu, who doing his service there at the BBT. Uh, very similar to Anuta Prabhu, Prabhu last weekend who spoke uh, Chitta Prabhu was there in, in Henry Street when I first joined the temple and he's one of those wonderful stalwart devotees of Shishi Radha Govinda and we share a, a, a very common experience. Very wonderful senior devotee, very scholarly in his presentations and he's going to speak on the Upadesha Amrita and draw us some similarities behind this Upadesha section of of Sri Kalyana Kopataru that Bhaktivinoda Thakur is giving us to uh, Srila Rupa Goswami. So without further ado, let's turn it over to Gaurani Prabhu and Sri Rani Mataji. You want to start at this time, Sri Rani Prabhu? Sure. Yeah, I can. Dikha Guru Kripa Kuri Muntro Podesh Kuri Yada Khan Krishna Tattero Nirdesh Diksha Guru Kripa Kuri Koriya de Khan Krishna Tatpera Nirde Dikha Guru Kripa Kori Mantra Upadesh Kori Yada Khan Krishna Tatpera Nirde Diksha Guru Kripa Kori Mantra Upadesh Koriya de Khan Krishna Tatvera Nirde Dikha Guru Kripa Kori Mantra Upadesh Koriya de Khan Krishna Tatvera Nirde Shiksha Guru Kripa, Shiksha Guru Brinda Kripa, Koriya Pa. Sadhake Sikhan Sadhane Rambasa. Shikha Guru Brinda Kripa, Koriya Pa. Sadhake Sikhan Sadhane Rambasa. Shiksha Guru Brinda Kripa Koriya Pa Sadhake Sikhan Sadhane Ranga Pa Shikha Guru Brinda Kripa Koriya Pa Sadhake Sikhan Sadhane Ranga Pa so maybe we can ask Vishnu to read the translation of the first two before we do the last. The initiating spiritual master shows his causeless mercy by giving his disciples instructions in chanting the Harinam Mahamantra. 
by doing by so doing he points the disciples towards the direction of the truths pertaining to the supreme lord shri krishna but i consider the numerous instructing spiritual masters to be more important for they show unlimitedly more mercy by training the neophyte devotees in all the essential aspects of principal regulative devotional service sadhana bhakti shivani prabhu shikha guru gana pade koriya pranati upadesh mala boli নিজ মন প্রতি শিক্ষা গুরু গণপদে করিয়া প্রণতি উপদেশ মাল বলি নিজ মন প্রতি শিক্ষা গুরু গণপদে করিয়া প্রণতি উপদেশ মাল বলি শিক্ষা গুরু গণপদে করিয়া প্রণতি উপদেশ মালা বলি নিজ মন প্রতি offering my prostrated obeisances unto the lotus feet of all instructing spiritual masters i will now narrate this garland of different types of spiritual advice which will all be directed towards my own mind thus begins the song one of the Upadesha of uh, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur's Sri Sri Kalyana Kopatru. And let us introduce Bhakti and Kimberly. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hare Krishna, everyone. Hare Hare. They have the, they have the video on? Yeah, can you, you can't see me? Uh, he can't see you because I think we're still doing the screen share for the bhajan. But she's there. She's on the side there, Prabhu. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then we can. So, Bhakti and Kimberly has been re rehearsing this song diligently. And one thing I just want everyone to be patient because the internet connection isn't the best. She's there at the temple. And we're all undergoing this whole quarantine situation. I just want to say that my blessings out to everyone and well wishes to all those devotees that are undergoing hardship because of this, this pandemic that's going on. And by the grace of the Lord, we'll, we'll all make it through. So she's been practicing this wonderful bhajan and please close your eyes and just listen. She's gonna sing this, this bhajan that's called the soul's real position. And by meditating on this, we can realize that despite all of the hardships they were going through in this mature world, that we have a higher purpose uh, in relationship there to the Bhagawan Lord Sri Krishna. So go ahead, Mataji. So what I you. think we're gonna do, just, just uh, for everyone to know, I think what we're gonna do is, Vishnu is gonna share the lyrics on the screen so that we can read along with it. And then from time to time, Vishnu, uh, maybe you can go back to to her. You have your own lyrics there, right, uh, Bhakti and Kim? Yeah. Okay, so you just, Vishnu, just from time to time, maybe you go back and forth. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. huh? <laughs> But 
Tamaya e samsa Di vere paka se te Tamaya e samsa Di vere paka se te Can you meet you? What's 
Thank you. Thank you all. So let's let's read the translation. Um, Shivani Mazi, do you want to read the Bengali and then let's read the translation? Monore, Kanu Mitsi Bujisho Ashar, Futomoi e Shangshar, Jiber Bukhitichar. Amongol Shomudro Apar. English? Vishnu? Oh, my dear mind, please tell me why you uselessly adore and worship such false things in this world. This material world is simply composed of five gross elements, earth, water, fire, air, and ether. But the pure spirit soul somehow wants to keep himself in a most degraded condition of object ruination by remaining within this unfathomable ocean of inauspiciousness. Bhuta tito shuddha jeev, nilanjan shada shiv, maya tito premiro adhar, tabo shuddha shatta tai, e jaro jagote bhai, kyanu bukta hao parbar, Gauravani Prabhu. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, the translation for a second. The spirit soul actually lives beyond these five gross elements. And he is always spotlessly pure, devoid of material designations, and abounds in auspicious spiritual happiness. He is certainly a fit receptacle for pure love of God, Godhead, which is beyond the range of Maya's illusions. Oh, my dear mind, my dear friend, you are meant to be situated in pure transcendental existence as pure spirit soul. So I ask you now, why do you become enchanted and captivated again and again within this dull material universe? <laughs> Omritiro dhar, tate buddhi ujito tomar. Tumi atta rupi hoe, sri choitono shamashroe, brindavane thako onibar. Just become a little introspective for once and try to keep in mind the fact that pure spirit soul is actually eternal and full of nectar. Such intelligent judgments are quite befitting you. Reassuring your real form is pure soul. Just remain always in Vrindavan under the shelter of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Nitto kal shokhi shange, paromananda sheba range, jugalo bhajano karoshar. E hano jugalo dhan. Make the worship of the divine couple your only object of pursuit. And in the company of their most dear cowherd girlfriends and maidservants, 
just perform transcendentally joyful service unto their pastimes for all eternity. I am not able to predict the destination of those foolish souls who dare to neglect such a treasure as this conjugal service. Chai, chai, wonderful. So now, Achitopabu, are you there? Unmute. Yes, I'm here. So Achita Prabhu is going to bring us closer to these instructions, Upadeshas, by bringing in also the instructions given by Trila Upa Goswami and his Upadesha Amrita. Thank you so much, Prabhu, for joining us from Los Angeles. Achita right. Prabhu is a very senior devotee, and we're very fortunate to have him here to uh, uh, give us this wonderful Sangha this evening. Hari Hari Bo Thank you for the invitation, and my obeisances to all present. So it's no accident that the teachings of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur are completely in line with those given by Rupa Goswami because this is the Sampradaya that we're in. And one of the features of Sampradaya is that the knowledge is supposed to be handed down unchanged, going back all the way to the Supreme Lord Krishna himself. So we can feel confident that when we hear from any of the acharyas in our line, including our own Srila Prabhupada, because sometimes the tendency was there for some devotees to want to jump over Srila Prabhupada. One devotee once said to Srila Prabhupada, my favorite author is Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Prabhupada cut him off. He said, no, I am your favorite author. <laughs> so we have to remember that, that all of these teachings have been further condensed and given to us by Srila Prabhupada. Doesn't mean that we can't hear from and appreciate the predecessor acharyas, but it means that we should understand that Srila Prabhupada was sent specifically to condense all of this knowledge and disseminate it in such a way that the dull-brained residents of Kali Yuga in the time that we're living in can gradually understand and appreciate. But of course, of course, there, besides the mercy of coming in contact with a pure devotee, there has to be some purification of the heart, purification of consciousness. Once on the morning walk, one devotee said to Srila Prabhupada, you know, Prabhupada, as soon as we start talking to people about principles, they, they, they don't want, and Prabhupada stopped, he jammed his cane in the ground, he said, why are you surprised? You're preaching to cats and dogs. Make them fortunate, give them the chanting of the holy name, give them Krishna Prasadam. So there has to be some purification to be able to understand and appreciate the writings of Srila Prabhupada or Srila Bhakti Siddhanta or to speak of Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. So in this one first part of his Upadesh, section of Kalpana, Kal, 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 Kalyana Kalpataru, he's actually given three aspects. The, the Sambandha, Abhide, and Prayojana are actually here in this very first song. And the Upadeshamrita, the nectar of instruction, is following the same guideline. Rupa Goswami gives us, first of all, the basic understanding of where we are and where we're coming from. Then he tells us what to do, and then he gives us the prayojana in the end about residing in Vrindavan, specifically at Radhakot. So everything is there in, in the Upadeshamrita, in Nectar of Instruction, everything is here, even in this first song of Bhakti Mila Thakur. So as we read Prophet's books, as we hear from the predecessor acharyas, we should always try to spot that. What is, what section of the three-pronged approach of knowledge are they presenting at that time? Sambanda, Abhideya, or prayojana. So, uh, Rupa Goswami, I'm sure all of you know the Upadeshamrita, you know this nectar instruction. If you have a, one book handy nearby, you can grab it. So we, you can read along as we go, because I'm going to go very quickly. It's now by my calculation here in Los Angeles, quarter to five, and this August meeting is supposed to end at 5.30, and I'm going to leave some time for discussion. So we'll have to kind of go real, real quickly through the Upadeshamrita. But I just wanted to read something Prophet said in his introduction before he got into the verses. He said that uh, Srila Rupa Goswami has given many other books, such as Bhaktira Samrita Sindhu, Vidagda Madhava, and Lita Madhava, but Upadeshamrita constitutes the first instructions for neophyte devotees. One should follow these instructions very strictly. Then it will be easier to make one's life successful. Hare Krishna. A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami. All right, so we'll again just go through the book real quickly. I will pause. We're not going to read the purports that you can do as homework, but well, I'll read the Sanskrit because it's very, very sweet. Uh, and Prophet said, even if you don't understand, but just by hearing, 
this knowledge in, in any language, but specifically in the original Sanskrit, it really affects the heart. So we'll read the Sanskrit shloka, we'll read the English translation, and then I'll say a few words about that particular verse. And Shastabar Prabhu, how do you want me to do this? Do you want me to leave space after each verse for somebody else to chime in or just go on to the next verse? No need, Prabhu. You just go on. And if someone, if, if someone feels ur like the urgency to chime in, then Shastibar Prabhu and myself, we can do that. But you please go. Okay. Yeah, All right. Chat, if there's an urgent, relevant question, yeah, we can, we can take the question. Okay. That's what we're here for, discussion. The only thing I would like to ask is if he can slow down a tiny bit. I'm I know from New York. What do you want? No, <laughs> just a tiny bit. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I should say, Archie Tiprabhu, uh, some folks, many of the words that you're saying may, may be their first time hearing. Yeah. Okay. Well, for such people, especially if they can grab a copy of Nectar Instruction and follow along, it'll be much easier for them. But anyway, I'm just going to dive okay, in. So, uh, meanwhile, Vishnu, Vishnu, if you can go to Veda Base and see if you can find the uh, uh, the thing to share the screen with, uh, so that we yeah, can... the online Veda Base. Yeah, which verse are you referring to? Well, we're going to start with the first verse. We're just going to go systematically through. Got it. The eleven verses of the Nectar Instruction. Again, I'll read the Sanskrit and I'll read the translation. I'll say a few words about that verse and then move on to the next one. Okay, so here it goes. Vacho vega manasa kroda vega, jiva vega mudar pasta vega, etan vega nyobishahit, kritira sarvam apimam pritidim sashishyat. A sober person who can tolerate the urge to speak, the mind's demands, the actions of anger, and the urges of the tongue, belly, and genitals is qualified to make disciples all over the world. So this relates to Bhakti Vinod Thakur's first part of Upadesha, because it's talking to the fact that we're not these material bodies and therefore we have to take control of the senses. It's like getting in a car. Nowadays, everybody wants, I'm looking forward to self-driving cars, but it's just gonna mean a huge mess, I guarantee. Similarly in life, we are driving these bodies, cars of the body, and if we don't take control of the senses, then lo and behold, we'll have many accidents along, even the Royal Roads as Prophet used to say. So each of these senses can be controlled by Krishnaizing their activity. That's the main point of this first verse. The first sense that Rupa Goswami is talking about is the tongue. And the tongue has two businesses, to speak or vibrate tongue and to taste food. So obviously to Krishnaize those two, and Prabhupada mentions that extensively in his purport, activities one has to speak only Krishna Kata, as far as possible. You may still have to say, hi, how are you? But <laughs> the main idea is to use the tongue to vibrate Krishna Kata. And Krishna Kata comes in two flavors. One is words spoken by Krishna, such as the Bhagavad Gita. And then there's words about Krishna, spoken by Krishna's devotees, great saints, saintly persons, such as the Srimad Bhagavatam. So if we uh, systematically train ourselves, and in the early days, uh, I've heard complaints lately that systematic training is not happening so much in Islam temples anymore. But in the early days, as Shastivar said, like on Henry Street, as soon as you came through the door, they started pounding you with the Bhagavad Gita and remember this, memorize this. As a brahmachari, you would shake in your boots because any senior devotee could stop you at any moment and say, let's recite such and such chapter of Bhagavad Gita from heart. So you had to, you were motivated to learn this philosophy. Uh, immediately and joining the movement. So vibrating Krishna Kata is very important. Even if one is alone, whatever shlokas you can remember, you vibrate or you pick up a book and read it. And this way we can always remain in that mood of using the tongue for Krishna Kata. And then the second thing obviously is the taste and everybody likes to taste nice foods. Nothing wrong with that. Whatever is offered to the deities or offered to one's uh, personal deity or even a picture of the Lord at home, becomes prasadam. Prophet said once that, because some of what you're saying, Prophet, when we're traveling, you know, it's, it's, the formalities, Prophet said, just recite the prayers to the spiritual master three times, bus, finished, offering done. So, but it's the intention, because Krishna knows our heart, we can't fool him, it's the intention. So, uh, eating Krishna prasadam, very important. Another nice note Prophet made about prasadam is that when you're in the temple, you offer Krishna what he likes to eat. When you're at home, you can offer what you like to eat. 
So sometimes people get trippy about that, you know, what to offer. So don't trip out. When you're in a temple, follow the established, you know. Uh, I'm menu. so happy now we can keep eating pizza. I was worried you're going to stop eating pizza. <laughs> Just make sure that it's bona fide cheese. It doesn't have any animal rennet in it. Now, some of the devotees have also gone vegan. That's okay. I'm not going to condemn that. You know, we're, I, I'm not because I, I, I joined when Prophet was here and Prophet always took no products. So I'm still doing it. By offering it, our understanding was that whatever uh, cow the milk came from is going to benefit unlimitedly by giving her milk to Krishna, by having it being offered to Krishna. But one caution, though, because a lot of our young people especially have gone vegan, and even some of proper disciples have gone that way, it still has to be offered. <laughs> Too often devotees, you know, they go out or they buy something that's vegan and they just eat it. It has to be offered. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, and this is very important, because if we don't get over the hurdle of controlling the tongue, then the rest of the senses which are in line, they will not be controlled. So <clears throat> we have to offer. It's, Krishna says that if you don't offer your food before you eat it, then you're barely eating only sin. Krishna says. So it's very important. Why would God say that? Why would he point out this specific uh, point about offering? You must offer. So we, we should take that very seriously. Even if we're vegans, it's not that because there's no you know, cow product in there. It's, it's a hingsa, whatever, that it doesn't have. No, you have to offer it, which means it has to be offerable. Again, can't have anything strange in there. So though, these are the things that Rupa Goswami is pointing out. Please take charge of your body, take charge of the senses of the body, uh, beginning with the tongue. So if we can do those two things, vibrate Krishna Kata and eat only Krishna Prasadam, then everything else will come in line. The belly, the genital, the mind, and just keep bringing it back from wherever it goes, bring it back to Krishna Kata. Think about Krishna, Jain Hare Krishna. So these are the main points from the first verse. So again, time is running, so let us go on to verse number two. Did Mataji find it online? Prabhu, I have it. Okay. So verse number two. Prabhu, in the first verse, it even says the word vegan. Vacho <laughs> vegan. <laughs> 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 Leave it to go away. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it to go away. It says vegan. It says vegan four times in the first verse, right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just like Sir used to say about a St. Louis restaurant, he used to tell people, "Come and eat our pasta." <clears throat> it says in the first verse of the Upanishad, "Pasta vegan, order a pasta vegan." Okay, so verse number two. Atyahara payashascha prajalpo niyamagraha janasangashalo vyamcha chadbir bhakti vinashyati. Once the devotional service is spoiled, when he becomes too entangled in the following six activities. One, eating more than necessary or collecting more funds than required. Two, over endeavoring for mundane things that are very difficult to obtain. Three, talking unnecessarily about mundane subject matters. Four, practicing the scriptural rules and regulations only for the sake of following them and not for the sake of spiritual advancement or rejecting the rules and regulations of the scriptures and working independently or whimsically. Five, associating with worldly minded persons who are not interested in Christian consciousness and six, being greedy for mundane achievements. So very, very clear list, uh, easy to understand, uh, not so easy to practice <laughs> if, unless one is very serious, especially the first one, eating more than necessary. But Prophet did encourage you in the beginning because you're giving up all other kinds of sense gratification to become a devotee. So Prophet, even when he was cooking for the devotees, he encouraged him, eat more, eat more, another chapati, another chapati. And then when Sridesh got to chapati number 10, then he said, stop. <laughs> Nowadays, again, I noticed because I travel all over the world that this culture of allowing devotees to overeat, especially in the beginning, has died out. Every temple nowadays, it seems they make just enough prasadam that everybody can get first, and that's it. And if you want seconds, they look at you like you're from another planet, like you're a strange person or something. But that was not Prophet's culture. Prophet's culture and the culture on Henry Street, when we joined, Shastavar can, can, can uh, confirm, it was so much prasadam. I remember I would just go and just eat and eat and eat. Basic, you know, we didn't have a lot of money to make a lot of fancy prasadam, except for feasts. But the basic prasadam, dal, rice, chapati, there was always enough. I never felt that I you know, wanted more and couldn't get more. There was always enough. Devotees were very, very conscious and conscientious to 
make enough nice prasad. And we had wonderful cooks, Harikesh Prabhu, Das Brahmachari, he was one of the cooks, and Agni Dev, and so many others, really wonderful cooks at Henry Street. So devotees ate, and we had a lot of devotees living there. A lot. It wasn't just like a handful like you find in most temples nowadays. It was like 60, 80, 100 devotees at a time in that building. So we have to revive this culture. Whoever is in charge of cooking at any temples, if they, or if you have influence over the cooks, they have to make enough. Because again, something I've noticed, if you develop a stingy attitude towards serving prasadam, you're going to be in difficulty. Krishna is going to tie your purse strings and you'll be always wondering where is money coming from. But if you have a big heart, a generous heart, and you give prasadam generously to everybody, uh, then Krishna will always send, there'll always be enough, no worries at all. Even now in this pandemic, pandemic, you know, we weren't getting as many donations as we used to. And Krishna just gave the idea, why don't you uh, offer the morning Abhishek as something devotees can sponsor? And we started doing that. $108 to sponsor the Abhishek, and we put a, your name next to the deities. And I take a picture every day and I post it on my Facebook page. And lo and behold, so much Lakshmi is coming in. So we never have to worry about Lakshmi. We just have to follow Prabhupada's example all the time. Follow Prabhupada's example. Prabhupada's example was make enough prasadam so devotees can eat and be satisfied. So I wouldn't worry about that one too much in the very beginning of our, but as we go along naturally, naturally we start to cut back to, to the point where we eat what we require. Now funds, this may seem, well, you know, ISKCON, people collect so much money. One devotee said that one of the reasons he went to uh, Narayan Maharaj's campus because the, the sannyasis and the brahmacharis there, they're poor. That was, again, that was not Prophet's example. Proper example, he said in, in, in Vrindavan once, that some of them, the so-called sadhus, you bring them money and they go, I don't touch money. Prophet said, give me. <laughs> give me, I'll take it. I know what to do with it. So that should be our attitude. Yes, we can accept Lakshmi as much as possible if we're spending it properly for Krishna conscious projects. We don't have this attitude that, no, there's no such thing as over collecting for Krishna conscious projects. For oneself, yes, one should not collect too much money and then, you know, because the mind again will start tripping out what to do with it, where to go. And if we do that, and I'll just share this with you, you probably know there was one big scheme that fell apart here in Iskand recently, some devotee, young devotee, his parents are also devotees, but he became a trader, forex trader, trading foreign exchange. And he convinced so many devotees to invest in his business and collected some, some estimate $30 million. And now that money is gone. And I spoke to a lot of those devotees who invested. I said, you forgot, that's not your money. Any money that you have, no matter how it comes, whether it's from your paycheck or inheritance or whatever, it's still Krishna's money. So you have to know how to spend it properly on, for Krishna conscious projects. And then you won't be implicated in these kind of schemes. Because a, a person who's spending for Krishna becomes extremely cautious, extremely cautious not to get burned. Prabhupada did not like to be cheated in any way, shape or form. And he always pushed his disciples, don't be cheated by these wallets who will sell you this and sell you that, you know, milk with 50% water and stuff like that. So we always have to be cautious. If there's, also that, there's also that story of Sham Sundar Prabhu realized that there was some major uh, currency devaluation going on. And he told Prabhupada, if we buy gold, the gold will stay fixed in this money and we can just, we'll just watch it grow. They're about to devalue the currency. So Prabhupada said, if you know what you're doing, go for it. So they went there and they sat there at the office and watched the ticker tape go. And the money was just rolling in and rolling in. And the, you know, they just saw the value of the gold going. Then at some point, Prabhupada said, that's enough. Stop it. You know, it's just becoming gambling. Like beyond this, it's, this, it's unreasonable. Why continue okay. this? Exactly. Okay, and then the others are pretty self-evident. Over endeavoring for mundane things. Uh, the way I normally explain that to young devotees is that if you're endeavoring so hard for something that you don't have time for good sadhana, then that's over endeavoring. <clears throat> so the sadhana has to be there. Chanting 16 rounds nicely, following the principles, reading, associating nicely with devotees. If you have no time for that, then maybe whatever project you're involved in, it's just, it's over endeavoring. Um, talking unnecessarily about mundane subjects, that's very clear, practicing the scriptural rules and regulations, only for the sake of following them. That one, uh, Prophet spent quite a bit of time explaining because the tendency is when we take to Krishna consciousness, we develop this attitude of being holier than the rest of the people. But Prophet always remind us that where we came from, that you're all poppy toppies, simple, low-born, and I've given you the good fortune of Krishna consciousness. So, 
to repay me, just go out and give that good fortune to others. Don't go out there feeling better than anybody else. Just go out and give them Krishna consciousness, preferably in the form of my books, chanting of the holy names, prasadam. Those are the three main ways that Prophet spread his movement. And if we do that, it tends to keep us um, humble. If you don't go out and face the public, it's easy to get puffed up and follow scriptural rules just for the sake of following them and showing the world that you're an advanced soul. But if you go out on Harinam, if you go out and try to distribute the books, if you go out and distribute prasadam, then those activities tend to keep one very humble. <clears throat> um, associating with worldly minded persons, that's clear. Being greedy for mundane achievements. Again, uh, as we Progress in Krishna consciousness, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta pointed out, um, that Krishna will give, fulfill material desires, if that's what you really have. Uh, if you don't really want Krishna, it's much easier for him to give you all kinds of material facility, and fulfill your material desires, but you won't make very much advancement towards the goal of Krishna Prema, which is the ultimate goal of the chanting. We say every morning, or we should say every morning, if one is infested with the ten offenses in the chanting of the Hare Krishna Mantra, then despite his endeavor to chant the holy names of many births, he will not get the love of Godhead, which is the ultimate goal of his chanting. So one of the offenses is to maintain material attachments, even after understanding so many instructions. So we have to be careful. Any discussion on that before we go on to the next verse? Mataji, verse 3, you want to put that up? Utsaha nishaya dharya tat tat karma pavartana sangatyaga tato britte shadvir bhakti prasijati. There are six principles favorable to the execution of pure devotional service. One, being enthusiastic. Two, endeavoring with confidence. Three, being patient. Four, acting according to regulative principles such as Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam hearing, chanting, and remembering Krishna, five, abandoning the association of non-devotees, and six, following in the footsteps of the previous acharyas. These six principles undoubtedly assure the complete success of pure devotional service. Who wants complete success in devotional service? Say Haribol. 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 We should be motivated in this way. Haribol. So this, this, these six principles we should Haribol. remember. Utsahan. We have to be enthusiastic in there. I can see from all the faces that are available on the screen here that you're all very, very enthusiastic Krishna Bhaktas. So it's enlivening to associate with you because your enthusiasm spills over and forces me to be more enthusiastic. And this is the way it goes. We're supposed to push each other higher and higher and higher all the way back to Godhead. So Utsahan, very, very important. Prabhupada Prophet said, if you're not feeling enthusiastic, then there's something wrong with your practice of devotional service. So this is one way we can check ourselves. If I'm chanting without enthusiasm, if I'm associating with, without enthusiasm, whatever I'm doing, whatever savor that I'm doing, if I'm not doing it enthusiastically, then I should immediately want to get to the root of the problem. And it's generally some mistake I'm making in my sadhana. I'm not chanting and hearing properly. I'm not associating nicely with devotees. Some problem is there. And it can attack at any point. Sometimes the devotees ask, how is it that so many of ISKCON gurus especially fell down. Does that mean they were not advanced? No. Even advanced devotees can fall down if they start slackening in any of these areas, especially in associating with one another. And it becomes easier to make that mistake when you become a big shot, you know, when you become a guru and you have lots of people looking up to you and telling you that you're wonderful. It becomes more and more easy to make that mistake of believing, as we say in the West, believing your press, believing your, you know, your Facebook likes. It's, we forget that we're still, as Bhakti Noh Tucker says, we're still falling in this material world and we're uselessly chasing after. So we can get back to that again. We can get back to that again. Now, two things are there. If one falls down, usually one goes back to wherever one left the material world. Generally, that's how it happens. And just the opposite. When one comes back to Christian consciousness, one usually picks up exactly where one leaves off. So... Um, I remember hearing a class from <clears throat> Bhakti Tirtha Maharaj in Atlanta once. He was cautioning devotees. He said, don't fall down, because two things will happen. You won't be happy with the non-devotees because you'll always be criticizing them. They don't know anything. They're so dumb. They're so foolish. And you won't be happy with the devotees because they know too much. 
So just stay with the devotees. Don't ever leave the association of devotees, no matter what happens. And then everything will be all right. Then we won't make this mistake of uh, losing our enthusiasm. So being patient, that's very, very important. Uh, in Kali Yuga, you know, our society is made up of people coming out of the general populace, which means everybody comes in with baggage. It's not that as soon as you pick up the bead bag and start chanting, you become a pure devotee. Uh, it doesn't work like that. So we have to be patient with ourselves, more patient with others. Uh, don't lose patience because that's one of Maya's tricks. You know, you've been chanting for six years and, you know, is this really working? Is there really a Krishna after all? You know, you start becoming impatient and then you become reattracted to non-devotional activities. Acting according to regular principles, that's very important, obviously. Um, abandoning the association of non-devotees. Again, it doesn't mean that you don't associate with former friends or family members, but associate knowing that you're dealing with a snake with a jewel on its, on its head. Don't be uh, so attracted to the jewel that you forget that you're dealing with a snake. And that comes, it seems harsh, especially when you're dealing with family members. Oh, yeah, who's, the, who's, the, what's the, who's the snake here in the announcement? <laughs> it's a fact. Uh, Prophet said, look at Pralab Maharaj. Such an innocent five-year-old boy, but his own father was trying to kill him. So Prophet told, turned to the devotees and said, don't be surprised when you start chanting Hare Krishna, even your own parents will try to kill you sometimes. So we should know, we're dealing with snakes with jewels on the head. So Prophet gave the, the guidelines. If you go home, and this is something also difficult for some devotees to do, don't eat what they cook. Because some of the devotees asked Prophet, he said, I'm going home for Christmas, what should I do? They're going to cook and they're going to, Prophet said, don't eat what they cook. You can accept fruit and milk, otherwise don't accept anything. <clears throat> so again, if we follow Prophet's guidelines, we'll associate nicely with the outside world to give them Krishna consciousness. Again, it doesn't mean that you bash people with the Bhagavad Gita. We're not a, you know, Bhagavad Gita bashing society. But it means that you should have a mission. If you're always on a mission, this is another thing that Bhakti Tirthamar so nicely pushed all, all the time when he was here with us. Be mission oriented, always on a mission. So when you go out in the world, whether you go to, like when I go shopping, I always wear teal up because somebody will inevitably come and ask, hey, what's that all about, man? Or, you know, they'll start the conversation, which gives you the opening to, to give them some Christian consciousness. Like, oh, we have a wonderful restaurant, please come visit us. Like that, whatever, you know, level they can accept. But we don't go out there looking for their association. That will get us in trouble. All right, I think that's it. Following the footsteps of the previous Acharyas. Again, we have our Acharya Srila Prophet. We don't have to go elsewhere. Prophet pleaded with us, don't go anywhere. Whatever problems there are, you work it out amongst yourselves. And when others that have left and come and try to tell me that I should come and hear this person, that person, I just ask them. You show me one organization in the world that doesn't have any problems. It's not possible. We're in the material world. So we stay with Prophet's organization. We work out whatever problems there are because there is no guarantee. Anywhere you go, you're going to run into problems, problematic people. It's going to happen. Stick with Prabhupada. So that's our following in the footsteps of the previous Acharyas. So Prabhuji, we have a we have a question. Sure. So to go be Pala Kala is saying, Prabhu, I have a question. Sometimes a devotee may receive opportunities to share Krishna consciousness with the public. In these endeavors, how can we not get attached to them as mundane achievements, but constantly remember that they're services to Krishna? I'm just asking for the purification of my own consciousness, not to point anyone out. Yeah, well, very good question. When we go out, we go out to represent Srila Prabhupada and the predecessor Acharyas, Bhakti Siddhanta, Gorky Shur, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, all the way back to Krishna. So if we see ourselves always as representatives, as assistants, then we don't take credit for anything positive that happens. And also we don't, we should try to, you know, correct anything negative that happens. But Prabhupada said once, when the Bodhi said to Prabhupada, you know, Srila Prabhupada, when I'm preaching, Prabhupada cut him up. He said, you're not preaching, I'm preaching. And you're helping me. <laughs> so if we ha always have that mentality, we are assistants to Srila Prabhupada. We are not preachers, we are assistant preachers. And if, when you put yourself in that mood, then you, you, you don't become attached to the results either way, positive or negative. Another devotee said, Prabhupada, you know, sometimes we go out and nobody shows up, we do a program. Prabhupada said, don't be sorry, just chant. Even the insects in the wall will benefit if they hear from you. So either way, whether we're getting a 
large turnout or nobody comes, we are not attached because we're just representing Srila Prabhupada. But I'll give you an example from my own uh, preaching. I, I'm in charge of college preaching here, and we've been preaching at the Cal State LA for decades. And there was one elderly, she just retired, one teacher, would, who she would teach three classes every semester and invite us to come and speak. And, you know, being the head, I would always go there. And she objected in, in the beginning when we would say, 5,000 years ago, knowing that Kali Yuga was starting, Vyasadeva had everything written down. She said, there was no writing 5,000 years ago. She objected to so many things that we said. But just by going there every semester, and we always start out with chanting, we always bring prasada. Lo and behold, after a couple of years, she completely turned around and she was pushing her students to take more and more interest in Christian consciousness. If we didn't immediately tell them about the four regulatory principles, she would say, remember, tell them about your principles. <laughs> so just by being exposed to us, being exposed to the Hare Krishna mantra, being exposed to prasada, people's hearts change, they, their hearts change. So we, we know that, <clears throat> we don't take credit for it, but we just go out there and try to represent Srila Prabhupada. <clears throat> Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. There was one thing that I always liked what Srila Prabhupada said. Um, his quote was, follow my example as I did in the beginning at 26 Second Avenue. That is preaching, cooking, writing, talking, chanting. Everything was a one man show. I never thought about the audience. I was prepared to chant even if there was no man to hear me. Jai Srila Prabhupada. Jai Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Okay, shall we go on to the next verse? Text number four, Mataji, put it on the screen. Dadati Patagrinati Goyam Akati Pritchati Bhunte Bojate Chaiva Shadbudam Priti Lankshanam Offering gifts in charity, accepting charitable gifts, revealing one's mind in confidence, inquiring confidentially, accepting prasad, and offering prasad are the six symptoms of love shared by one devotee and another. So gift giving and receiving, both have to happen. Some devotees, in my experience, they like to give gifts to other devotees, but if you try to give them something, no, 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 I don't. No, that's not right. Then you're seeing yourself as the proprietor, as the benefactor, and Krishna says, no, 529. I am the benefactor, and I am the proprietor of everything. So, and I'm the friend of everyone. So we should not try to usurp Krishna's role. We should graciously accept what's given to us. And then we can, you know, re-gifting is okay. We are not against that. Prophet did it. Prophet did it. Prophet, whenever he traveled, devotees would give him watches and this and that. Prophet would keep it for a little while, then he would give it to another devotee. So re-gifting is okay. But you should always accept what's given. Not feel yourself that I'm too wealthy or too whatever that I don't accept gifts. No. Whatever devotees give from their heart, accept it. Sometimes it'll be something really big will shock you, and sometimes it'll be something minuscule. But either way, you accept graciously. Uh, so giving in charity and also receiving gifts. We both have to be there. We should practice that. And we give according to our means. Again, we don't go into debt to, to try to impress anybody. That's not the devotee mentality. Whatever you have, Whatever you can comfortably give, you give. Um, don't, don't go into debt to do it. We were not here to impress the world or impress each other with material achievements or material accoutrements. I, there was one devotee, again, I, from my own experience, I'll tell you. One devotee, he got married to a highly educated devotee, his wife, lawyer, and he himself didn't have much education or anything material. And it was bothering him. It really ate at his heart. So one day, foolishly listening to his foolish mind, he got a gun and went to a bank and robbed the bank <laughs> to get enough money to impress his wife. Unfortunately, he got caught and he was put in jail. So we shouldn't listen to the foolish mind in terms of being materially impressive, in terms of learning or what we have. Or No, all of that is not important to Krishna. It's not important what you have so much, it's what you do with what you have. That's what impresses Krishna. So a very wealthy man who comes and puts $100 <clears throat> in the honey is not impressing Krishna as much as a very poor person will give his last dollar. And I'll give you a couple of examples from my own Sankirtan endeavors. In New York, I was distributing 
uh, BTG is down in the Bowery area of Manhattan. And one guy on the street, at first he said no, but you know, I pressed him a little bit, showed him the pictures and whatnot. So he went in his pocket and he said, you know, sir, he said, sir, this is my last dollar, but I can see this is important to you and I can see this is something important. So I'm gonna give you my dollar and I'm gonna take it. I was really trying to collect, collect money and said to go back to the South where I'm from, but I'll give you my last dollar. Now that impresses Krishna. You give your last dollar <clears throat> to get a BTG. That impresses Krishna. Not, not so much as if you meet, uh, I was with Brigopati one marathon here in LA when we used to do the airports. And who came through? O.J. Simpson. He had a, a son and daughter with him. So he comes in and is, you know, they're in a hurry, they're coming into the concourse and Brigo stopped them. And he said, no, 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 I don't want this. So he left. About half an hour or so late, he came back in the opposite direction. This time he only had one child with him, his son. I guess they put the daughter in a plane and so he was going home. So Brigo again stopped him. And this time the son said, daddy, I want the book. This was before, you know, the whole murder case. He said, daddy, I want the book. And OJ said, well, he said, yes, get me the book. So he gave Brigo $5 for the Bhagavad Gita. And I'm convinced that because he gave those $5, that's why he's alive today. <laughs> if he hadn't given those $5, he would have been found guilty and sent to jail for life or you know, hung or whatever. So Krishna's not impressed so much by what we have is what we do with what we have. That's what the person said. So, uh, revealing one's mind in confidence and inquiring confidentially. This is a very, very important topic. We could speak for a long, long time on this, but revealing your mind doesn't mean that you go to everybody up and down the block, everybody in the community, and tell them what your problem is. That's not what is meant here. Revealing the mind means finding a senior person, an authority whose advice you're going to take and then you tell them what the problem is. That's what it means. Otherwise, you just create disturbance. If you go and tell everybody what your problem is, and you just get into the habit of talking about you and your problem, not really wanting to have the problem solved. If we really want a solution to small problems or large problems, we always have to approach an authority. Otherwise, I heard a class by Jai Patakamarsh where he was talking on this verse, and he said, otherwise, it's like, taking a truck full of garbage and just dumping your garbage in somebody's lawn and driving off. That's what it is when you just go around and tell everybody your problems, not wanting to hear any solution. So if you really have a problem, something that's burning us, we should. We can even speak to the deities. Prophet said that, he, re <laughs> he recommended, he said, you go in front of the deity and say, sir, this is my problem. And you tell the deity what your problem is. But if we really want to solve the problem, we should always try to find somebody who's position in devotional service we respect enough that we will accept their advice and try to implement it. So that's what it means to reveal your mind confidentially. And inquiring confidentially, yes, both things are there. Revealing your mind and inquiring, accepting facade and offering facade, very, very important, especially for householders. Householders usually living in a community, especially of other householders, should make it a regular habit to invite others for prasada. Otherwise one becomes, the tendency is to become a little bit stingy. Again, and when it comes to prasada, we should not be stingy. Um, there's that famous case of the devotee in Mayapur in 76, I was there, that was my first time to India. So on a walk, one devotee was asking Prophet, Srila Prophet, I'm newly married, please give me some advice, advice for Grihastha Ashram. So Prophet said, before you take your meals, you go outside and say, if anybody's hungry, please come and eat. <clears throat> so the devotee wasn't satisfied. And again, he asked Prabhupada. And again, Prabhupada repeated the same advice. Before you take your prasadam, you go outside and say, if there's anybody hungry, please come and eat. So it just shows us that the practice of sharing prasadam is so important. We must never forget that. Sometimes we become a little insular and prasadam means just me, my wife, and my two or three children. But that's not what it is in Vedic culture. Vedic culture means always being ready to accept even an uninvited guest and feed them. Atiti Narayan, somebody who comes at the wrong time, you bring them inside, offer them a place to see, to sit, some sweet words, at least something to drink, some water, before you inquire why they came. That's Vedic culture. And of course, again, within the community of devotees, we should regularly exchange prasada. 
that's the given. Okay, so these are the symptoms of love, Preeti Lakshana. And we want to develop love for Krishna's devotees alongside our reawakening our love for Krishna. They go hand in hand. Sometimes we love the devotees, but not Krishna. <laughs> We've seen that happen. Two devotees come to Krishna consciousness, they meet each other and they run off together and forget about Krishna consciousness. So not that. But love for the devotees is expressed in these six ways. And if we do that, then Krishna becomes pleased and our love for him will reawaken. All right, any questions on any of that? So Prabhuji, so you, you went over the Sambandhan, Abhideya, and you have 10 minutes left, not even 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, so, I know, that's why I was a little skeptical. So maybe, maybe you can go over the third part, which is the yeah. Parogen, which is the yeah, ultimate goal. Jump to one yeah. of the Parogen uh, slokas. Yeah, so the and, Parogen verses start with text number nine, if I remember correctly. So we can meditate on that. Yeah. The end game, ultimate goal of perfection, Krishna Prema. Okay, let's go to text number. Well, I mean, technically it starts with eight, but well, let's go to nine. You can read eight yourself later on. So at this point in the Upadesha Amrita, Nectar instruction, Rupa Goswami switches into prose. It's not your normal meters that we would chant in terms of Brahma Samhita meter or the regular meter from Bhagavad Gita. So he says, Vaikunta Janito Bara Madhupuri Tat Prapira Sotsavad Vrindaranya Mudara Paniramana Tat Trapigo Vardanaha Radha Kunda Mi Happy Go Kulapate Prema Mrita Plavanat Kuryada Sevurajato Giritate Sevam Viveki Nakaha. So, translation <clears throat> The holy place known as Matura is spiritually superior to Vaikunta, the transcendental world, because the Lord appeared there. Superior to Matura, Puri, is the transcendental force of Vrindavan because of Krishna's Rasalila pastimes. And superior to the forest of Vrindavan is Govardhan Hill, for it was raised by the divine hand of Sri Krishna and was the site of his various loving pastimes. And above all, the super excellent Sri Radhakund stands supreme, for it is over flooded with the ambrosial nectarian prema of the Lord of Gokula, Sri Krishna. Where then is that intelligent person who is unwilling to serve this divine Radhakund, which is situated at the foot of Govardhan Hill? We are coming in the line of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. His instructions were passed down through the six Goswamis uh, um, and now all the way down to Srila Prabhupada. So our reverence for Radha Kund comes from this line. Prabhupada even said in one place, but maybe even here in the next instruction, that even other Vaishnava Sampradayas, they don't have this appreciation for Radha Kund that the Madhva Gaudiya Sampradaya has. Um, so, we, however, have such reverence to Radhakun that we were instructed not to jump in like some people do. They go to Radhakun and they dive in and treat it like a swimming pool. We were instructed that it is so reverential, we should have such a reverential attitude towards it that we should just take some water and sprinkle on the head. I remember the first time I went was in 76. And um, some devotees actually disregarded that instruction and dove into Radhakun and had a nice whip. And when they came out, they were severely chastised by some of the senior sannyasi disciples of Srila Prabhupada. So I took that as a warning not to ever give in to an urge to dive into Radhakun. It's sufficient to go there and go there with the knowledge of why it's so revered. Why do we revere this Radhakun? The whole story is there. Many of you know how Krishna created his Shamakund and then how Radhakund was created um, and how the two are forever connected. But the main thing for us is that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, setting the example as the topmost devotee, went to Vrindavan in this mood of finding all of these lost pastime places of Krishna from 5,000 years ago. And then he asked the, the, the six Goswamis, Rupa Goswami, Sanatana Goswami especially, 
to go there and excavate. Actually, it's given, said that, Prophet said that it's Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself who found Radhakun uh, and indicated the real place. And most of the other sites were located by Rupa Goswami, Sanatana Goswami, some of the other Goswamis. So when we go to Vrindavan, we're taking Parikrama, we're taking the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. This is part of his mercy on the conditioned souls is to reestablish these pastime places of Krishna that we can visit, not in the mood of tourists, going to enjoy. And that place has really been transformed. There's so many high rise buildings now. It's not like when we first went in 76 and devotees went even earlier than that. It was just open fields and just a few buildings. We stayed, stayed at Fogla Ashram and we had to walk from there to, to Krishna Balarama there. It was a lot simpler time. Now it's like looking more and more like New York City. But um, the mood of the devotees who go there, ISKCON devotees, should be the same. We roll in the dust of Vrindavan as soon as we get there, and we go to all these pastime places to hear about Krishna, to absorb ourselves in Krishna Kata, because ultimately the goal of our chanting, the goal of all our practice is this Krishna Prema, and that Krishna Prema can be awakened a lot more quickly in the Dham. Prophet said, anything you do in the Dham, is multiplied a thousand times. That means both ways. If you chant and hear in the Dham, you get a thousand times the benefit. But if you do anything nonsense in the Dham, you also get a thousand times the punishment. He said, that's why there's so many monkeys and dogs in Vrindavan. He said that publicly, and some of the Goswamis there, they, they, <laughs> they didn't like Prophet's uh, you know, mood, but Prophet said that. Why are there so many dogs and monkeys in Vrindavan? He said, these are fallen souls who came here and did some nonsense, and then they had to take one birth in an animal body before going back to the spiritual world. So we have to be careful. We should go there. We should go to Radhakun, Circumambulate, Govardhan. All of these things should be done, but in the right mood. Mood of service. Service to the Dham. Dham Seva. Service to the Dham Basis. We shouldn't, Prophet warned us, even if you see them doing things that seem to be not proper, don't um, develop a bad attitude towards them. There, there's a reason why they're re residing in the Dham. It's not by accident. And um, so we should always see the residents of Vrindavan and Jagannath Puri and all of these holy doms, Mayapur, as forehanded, at least, <laughs> forehanded, if not higher than that, which is to be eternal servants of Radha Krishna, which is what the last verse of the Upadeshamita stresses that we should meditate on the Lord and ultimately, and Bhakti Vinotaka also says that as his last instruction in his first verse of the Upadesh section is that we should try to enter these eternal pastimes and uh, if we don't do it then we're being foolish and he doesn't know our destination where we're going so we should take advantage of this line that we're in by Krishna's mercy we're in this Brahma Madhva Gaudiya Sampradaya and the ultimate goal of that Sampradaya is to enter into the eternal pastimes of Radha and Krishna and the only way we can do that is to get the blessings of our predecessor Acharyas beginning with Srila Prabhupada and going all the way back through Bhakti No Thakur and all the way back to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself. Okay, we can stop here. Wow, that was, that was ecstatic. Discussion? That was really ecstatic. Thank you so much. Wow, you, that was wonderful. So my, my, my question is, we might never, never leave the United States again. <laughs> so <laughs> <You're not right. laughs> we might be quarantined forever with this Corona business. So what happens to those souls that will never, ever get to Radha Kun and take that transcendental water on their heads? What is their, their hope to achieve the mercy of Rupa Goswami who's giving this instruction and all our Vaishnava is over? Excellent question. Now, just like the trees in Vrindavan, now we're studying about this Kalpaturu, this desire tree. The trees in Vrindavan are not static. They don't stay in one place. They can move anywhere they want to. So similarly, Radha Kun and all the holy sites and the holy doms, they're not static places. They can manifest themselves anywhere. So Prophet said, if you can go to Vrindavan, he wanted us to go. He said back in 75, 76, that the temple president should send all the devotees to the Mayapur festival. And they all objected, but Prophet, we can't afford it. We can't afford it. Prophet said, you afford to eat, don't you? So you can figure it out. Somewhere they never did. I was fortunate to go, but... They never did. They never got to the point of sending all the devotees to the Mayapur festival. <clears throat> but Prabhupada said, if you can go, then you absorb yourself in hearing about Krishna. And if you do that sincerely, 
and sincerely follow one of the residents of Vrindavan, Srila Prabhupada. Literally, he resided in Vrindavan. He's from Vrindavan, Goloka Vrindavan, and originally came to this earthly plane and actually lived in Boma Vrindavan for quite some time before coming here to the West. So if we follow Prophet and hear from him and absorb ourselves and serve so that he's satisfied with us, then at any point, anywhere we are, these dhams can be revealed. They can be revealed. They're not static. It's not that you have to go to India. They, they can be revealed. You could be in Radakun right there in Potomac or Baltimore or New York. It can be revealed to you. And, and so it's just a question of our desire. We have to really want it, that low limb, that greed, we have to want to associate with the divine couple and we have to want to be on the banks of Radakun. And then we have to act accordingly. So Prophet said, first deserve, then desire. So if we develop our deserve side by serving selflessly for this lifetime, then for sure, Krishna is not uh, ungrateful. Krishna is so grateful, Prophet said, every step you take to him, he takes 10 steps to you. So if we continue with our practice of sadhana and associate nicely with devotees, Krishna will definitely reveal himself and reveal the Dham to us, no matter where we live. <clears throat> Jai Prabhuji, wonderful, wonderful Adios. answer. So everyone, we're a few minutes over, but this was such a wonderful, wonderful uh, Sangha that the time just flew by. Gauravani Prabhu, you have anything to say? Anyone else have any other questions for Archita Prabhu? Thank you for making your uh, schedule available for us so that we could be with you. Spend this My time. pleasure, Prabhu. <clears throat> we're so grateful. And, and uh, we're, this is the beginning. We're going into this book little by little. We're wading into this beautiful river, and it's uh, uh, song by song. So uh, please spread the word. We're so happy. Yes, to definitely. Come back, come back and, and join us for yes. some of the other nectar topics. Definitely. Thank you very much, all of you. May you stay safe from COVID Asura. <laughs> Just take shelter of Krishna, no matter what. Good times or bad times. Sometimes it's harder to take shelter of Krishna when times are good. When times are bad, when we're all fear of, afraid of COVID Asura, then we naturally say, Krishna, protect me. Yeah, reading reading Krishna book, uh, Prabhupada is is always describing how every single time the some some difficult situation came, how the how the residents of Vrindavan just took full, total and complete shelter of Krishna. Yeah, yes, Lord Nishingadev, take shelter of Lord Nishingadev, Lord Krishna, and everything will be fine. Prahlad Maharaj says that it's Balasineha Sharanam Pitaro Nishingad. That it's not. The parents that can't protect the kids, the boat can't take you across the ocean, and the medicines can't cure your, you know, disease if you don't, if you're neglected by Lord Shingadev, if you don't have the shelter of Lord Shingadev, none of these things work. So yes, we can take medicines, we can do our best to protect ourselves, but we ultimately have to take shelter of Lord Shingadev and Lord Krishna. Yeah, <clears throat> so true. We're, we're blessed that uh, at least there's a lot of online Sangha and, um, you know, although although uh, we all know that death is coming for all of us at this point, uh, it's more present than normal. So we're able to be in the mood of Parikshit Maharaj and say, "Well, we don't know, but we we know that it's there. It's present. It's all around us. So let me let me chant. Let me hear. Let me take sangha during this time." Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Shasti Bhar Prabhu. Is there anything Hare, you want to add before we close out today? Wonderful, wonderful evening. Wonderful singing, wonderful reading, yes. and wonderful, wonderful lecture by Archita Prabhu. Can't thank you enough and thank all the devotees. Any last minute questions for Archita Prabhu before we drop off? Or anyone out there? Okay, it's like it was so it was so wonderful that no one has any questions. All the all the questions were answered. And we're all overflowing. All glory to Srila Prabhupada and all glory to all the nice devotees who arranged this Sangha. And I hope to check in again with you next week. Jai. Haribo, everyone. Haribo. Haribo. Out here. Thank you.
a quick announcement for everyone. Thank you all for joining. Uh, those who would like to sing or would like to share their realization for the book or different topics, feel free to email me and uh, we would love to have you sing or share your thoughts. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for being here. Speak to you guys very soon, by Krishna's grace. Haribo. Haribo.